Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Bitter Rivals podcast. This is episode 91. I am host along with co-host Avery, or I am Avery Roush. This is Catano Gallo. Sorry, fumbling my words a little bit there. It's been a long day. Um, So sorry we could not get this to you last night at uh, 7 p.m. like we normally do on Sundays. As you know, there was a Leafs game on yesterday, so that was part of the reason we wanted to maybe catch that in there. And uh, we also, together... Went out on Saturday night, and we're totally not... We were in zero record. condition to record. We were not recording a podcast yesterday. There was no way that a podcast was getting recorded yesterday. So here we are. We are here today on a Monday, coming at you. Uh, probably be a little bit late. What do you think? Are you going to get this up by 8, 9? Ah, at some point. At some point Monday night, it'll be up. Some t- some point Monday night. Anyway. Um, yeah, not a whole lot going on this week. Um, wow. Could you... Can you believe it? I, I Curveball, man. Totally thrown at me. The Leafs are playing Tampa in the first round. Like, locked in. Did you well, know that? Thunk it? Who'd have, who thunk have it? thought that was even possible? <laughs> it's not like we've known that since November. <laughs> like, uh, so do you got, Have they confirmed home ice yet, or is it just... No, no, not confirmed home ice, but okay. we're probably going to have home ice. Like, we would have to lose, like, everything, I think, to get to get to not get home ice at this point so hopefully that doesn't happen uh lost last night to the detroit red wings that was a tough one the leafs did not play well Nadalkovic nadalkovich played fantastic i actually they did play reasonably well they they kind of got fucked matt murray's out now again so yeah that was no oh, excuse me that was a rough watch that was that looked real ugly it's just i don't get it man i don't that's such a freak injury to happen. Why does it happen to the guy who just gets injured twenty four seven? Like he because that's exactly cannot, who it ha- that's who it's supposed to happen to. Avery. Like he can't play three games without getting hurt. He actually can't play. Like I would like to know. I I don't know, but I would like to know what his longest stretch of games without being injured this year has been because it's it's not been a long time. Like, yeah, I say it can't be more than like three or four. It's unreal, man. It's absolutely unreal. Um, and it seems like every, like if that happens to Samsonov, he just like brrr, shakes it off, gets up, and does his thing. And again, it's a concussion. It's not that easy. Yeah. But if that happens to Samsonov, I don't think, like, for whatever reason, Matt Murray smokes his head off the ice. I don't think Samsonov smokes his head off the ice. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it always happens to him. If Samsonov gets run, it's fine. Like, he's just fine after. But if Murray gets run, he's got a fucking torn ACL. I say, you might as well get the stretch out. Yeah. Broken ribs, broken finger. Like, it's amazing how much this guy gets hurt. And uh, everybody thought that was going to be the issue coming in. And lo and behold, it's the issue. Like, a well, big I mean, issue. I mean, that's a, that was as a, as a not Leafs fan. Uh, part of that was the injuries, but also I didn't think he would play well when he wasn't injured, which he, like that, at least that side of the coin has been fine. Like he has played well when he's been healthy. Yes, he's a good goalie when he's healthy. He was even a good goalie in Ottawa when he was healthy. And Ottawa, as we know, is not a very good defensive team, specifically in years prior to this one. They're not good this year, but they were even worse prior to this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I just, uh, it's so frustrating. It It really is because... It's not like all of our eggs are in his basket. Like, I, I, if it were me, Samsonov's the starter in game one, even if they're both 100% healthy. But, I mean, like, you just... To not even have him as an option. Sucks. It's, come on. Like, it's over and over and over again. And this poor Joseph Wolf kid's just up and down and up and down and up and down. Like, I don't know. I hope that it doesn't cost more than the third Beaver given to take that contract to get rid of it for a year. Uh, that's that's I guess the only hope. The other thing that came out of last night's game and is a very very big topic among uh, sports shows this morning as well as talk shows all day, and that is Michael Bunting and Sheldon Keefe insinuated last night after the game that he feels like I don't know how I bet on this sport. Like I I bet real dollars on this sport on occasion, on occasion yeah. in moderation. Yeah, you're not but a total I, degenerate. Not a total degenerate. Halfway there, but not a total degenerate. <laughs> anyway. Sheldon Keefe stated that he believes the referees have an ulti- like 
have an agenda against bunting. 100%. That's, like, really, really bad. For officials to have an agenda against a player for what well, I mean, I'm here's, not sure. I'll say, like, the thing is, like, I can think of, like, a handful of players who are in the same boat as Michael Bunting. Nazem Ooh. Kadri, off the top of my head. Andrew Shaw, both in Chicago and Montreal. Like, just those those agitators. They they play, even Tom Wilson. That Did played just super hard. Did you see the penalty that Bunting took? The 10-minute the misconduct first? Actually, we'll go there first. Uh, for kicking the stick away? It was stuck in his skate blade. Was it act? Like, it was, like, in the thing? Yes. Okay. So I I only saw the video of him, like, it like just looked like he was kicking it away, and I'm like, that's a really weak 10, but, like, if the game's getting to that point, I understand. The game was not getting to that point. The only thing that, would, like, would even insinuate that the game was to that point was when, I don't even remember the Detroit player, but Michael Bunting legit eats three cross checks in the back. Yeah. Like and they, and, uh, and they went four on four. And they went four on four with a with an embellishment penalty to Bunting. Yeah. Like, just, there's no way that that's an embellishment penalty. He gets cross-checked in the back, like, right in the numbers, in the middle of the ice, right in front yeah. of the referee, multiple times. Yeah, and, and that's things. I don't, I don't want to, because... I don't want to take away from what Keith said because hundred percent bunting is the type of player that gets an adjust- even Brendan Gallagher, honestly. There's it's 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 stepped back a little, but definitely like in the like mid like twenty teens, like yeah, Gallagher could get a penalty for breathing on the ice. It's just it's unbelievable. Like I'm like, and if that happens in game seven against Tampa, I will cry. I'll puke. I'll never watch the NHL like the yeah, I will, but and that here's the thing is I'd love to like you know comfort you and be like oh it won't happen but I there's no guarantee no like the rest is, I have no I I'm almost more sure that it will than it won't to be honest with you just the way that yeah. the league has officiated that guy specific like the the league the officiating we've talked about it at length the, in the league sucks it's awful it's like the worst in all of sports yeah. but on God if that happens in Game Seven man. I will freak out. I know you will. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what came out of the Detroit game last night. Nadalkovich had a game, like I said earlier. Uh, Samsonov had a game, actually, considering that he had to come in cold. Because Murray got hurt. Yeah. But um, I like where Samsonov's at. He threw up, a, threw up a donut against the Senators the night before. So that was good to see. That was a very, very good win by the Toronto Maple Leafs. Everybody contributed. Love to see it. Um, yeah, and and I honestly, I'm not even remembering right now what games they played prior to that. So let's move into the and into have have conversation. Yeah. So uh, again, a pretty quiet week. Um, actually, so the week actually started off pretty hectic uh, with a four three shootout win over the Buffalo Sabers. And, you know, you know, like the talk when Gary Batman was like, yeah, like coaches and players aren't like throwing games and tanking. Um, I kind of think he's full of shit because in this Buffalo Montreal game, Marty St. Louis played a power play of Alex Belzeal, uh, Jake Evans. I think Sean Farrell might have played on it. And like he basically just threw out all like, the third and fourth liners for the power plays because he was like, fuck it. Why not? Um, and then in the shootout. After Suzuki and Harvey Pinard shot, he went Matheson, Kovacevic, uh, Ulanen, and then for the win, Michael Pizzetta. <laughs> so, like, you can't tell me that he's like that Marty St. Louis is trying to win that game. You can't. We did, and Pizzetta scored the winner and wrote his stick, Dave the Tiger Williams style, in Buffalo, by the way, <laughs> which I'm surprised he made it out alive. Um, but yeah, it was it was a fun way to start the week. Uh, the boys were definitely hyped up about that one. Probably a highlight of the season in Montreal and maybe across the league. That celebration, so good, so good. Um, and then followed up with losses to Philadelphia and the Panthers, and then on Saturday night getting slapped by Carolina. Yeah. So yeah. All right. It was a 
roller coaster of a week in Montreal. Let's let's put it that way. Oh, and like four more guys are put on season ending IR. Yeah, yeah, but they're not <laughs> trying great. to lose. They're not trying to no. lose. <laughs> like me. Well, I mean, okay, like Belzeal has a fractured leg. Like, I don't think that's a oh, what do you got a hangnail on your pinky finger? Yeah, shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. Literally. Anyway, yeah. uh the games that I were forgetting was a three two win in Nashville. And a 3-2 overtime loss in a game that the, I think the Leafs played fantastic. And I completely forgot about that game. Uh, but we're beat by the Panthers. 3-2 in overtime. Which was a brutal giveaway by Tavares in overtime. He's, he should not be on the ice in overtime. I love John Tavares. But he that is not what he's good at. Man, it's, I was looking. Someone, someone tweeted like the stats of like, the Leafs plus minus in 3-on-3 three three overtime. And like him... And Nylander, I think, were like minus ten each. And like, yeah, bro, like, like, how how do you get how do you see three on three time if you're minus they should 10? not. Nylander, yes, Nylander, because he scored a couple of wild overtime goals this year. But John Tavares is honest to God. Like, I he should not see the ice in overtime. There's no way that that is uh, the right decision in any case in three on three overtime. There's it just reminds- he is not fast enough. To keep on. It, like, it reminds me of uh, when Shea Weber would play th- in like three on three. And I was just like, I love, he's, he was our best defenseman. Love him to bits, our captain. But for the love of God, do not put him on the ice in three on three. <laughs> like he's just, he's a, <laughs> skates in cement. Like what else do you want to say? They skate in cement. They're old like, guys. Never been not fleet built of foot. for it. Never been fleet of foot. Like even as an 18 year old, John Tavares was not a fast skater. I, I remember when I saw the Islanders play in Detroit one time on a hockey tournament. That is the one takeaway I had from that game is, wow, John Tavares is slow. <laughs> and that was like <laughs> 10 years ago, man. Yeah, and he so, definitely did not get faster. No. <laughs> but anyway, he's a great, like, around the net, fantastic hockey player. Yeah. You want him on the boards, like, in the, in the half wall, battling for a puck? Unreal. One of the best of the game. Tipping pucks? Unreal stuff. In tight. Like I just said, for around the net, like, one of the best. But why would you do that to him? Why are you putting him out there against the fastest guys in the league? Like, you're, you're setting him up to fail. Yes. You're setting him up to get burned. Yes. It was like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, moving on. Um, not a whole lot else to talk about in the league this week. I mean, uh, there's a pretty tight race going on in the West. That's That's been interesting to see. Um the East feels like it's been decided for like really ever. Nothing yeah, really other than other than like the last wild card spot. The final wild card, yeah. yeah. Who's still up for that? So Pittsburgh, Washington, so New York. York. The Islanders and Pittsburgh are in the two wild card spots right now. Uh, so the Islanders have eighty-seven points uh, with four games left. The uh, Penguins have eighty-six points with five games left. Okay, and who's behind them? So then Florida's got 85 points uh, with five games left. Uh, the Sabres have 81 points, but they have eight games left. And the Senators are probably the only other team that could get in there, and they have 80 points with five games left. How do the Sabres have eight games left? I have no idea. That's kind of wild, no? Have they just, like, not played hockey this year? I guess. Well, anyway, so, yeah, we're starting to really see what the playoffs are going to look like when they when they do come around. It's it's going to be it's going to be interesting and there's going to be a lot of a lot of heavyweight matchups. I I would I would contest. I think that seeing how like Toronto's favored everywhere against Tampa in this series and Obviously, like that makes me feel good about their chances because you'd rather be favored than than the dog always. But want to know what I'm like kind of amazed at? What? Do me a favor. Look up the Tampa Bay depth chart. Are we going to talk about their defense? Yeah, we are going to talk about their defense. Because <sighs> yeah, we is... talked about, I think the the left side is all right. It uh, it's certainly eye opening here. So, are you on daily faceoff by chance? Just we're looking at the same one. 
Well, I'm I'm on CBS, but I can head over to Daily Face Off if we want to support oh. uh, Sarah Valley here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, so we here we Valley. here we go. Here we go. So the left side, okay, the left side, sure. We got Hedman, Sergachev. Ian Cole's not good, but I mean for a, for a third lot for a third pairing guy like Hedman and Sergachev. That's uh, those are very very good hockey players. Hedman's had a bad year. Sergachev's been hurting people all year. But that's what he does anyway. Um, let's talk about this right side. Niklas Perbix. Who the fuck is that? I've literally no idea. I, I was going to start with Chernak and say him and Cole as a third pairing is totally fine. There's no issue with that. That's a great Who's... third pairing. But who the, yeah, who the fuck is Nicholas Perbix playing with Victor Hedman? Who's Darren Radish? Uh, what was the? Because I know I know he's not the hound that the guy Taylor Radish. Do. Yeah, Taylor but is like is it like his like shitty defenseman brother? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea who these guys are. And I I guess that's why Toronto's favored in this series. Yeah, like, but like. I just, I don't like any, like, I don't like this defense here, what I'm looking at here, these six guys in front of me. I don't like their chances against the Toronto Maple Leafs. I just don't. I like the left-hand side's chances. I don't think the right side stands a chance. Like I said to you, Victor Hedman has had a very bad year. He has not been Victor Hedman this year. Trust me, he is on my fantasy team. He has been awful, like like a shell of himself. Eight goals, 37 assists, 129 blocks. Playing about twenty three and about twenty four minutes a night. Yeah, it's not great. No, no, not for Victor Hedman. Did you say no. under forty assists? We're talking uh, about thirty seven. So under forty assists. Yeah. Did I say thirty? I meant forty. No, no, you said forty, but I mean thirty seven's not off. It's it's pretty close. That's it's under forty, but it's close. That's not Victor Hedman numbers, though, man. It no. just hasn't. I'm looking here. Their first power play unit has Sergachev on it, not Hedman. Never yeah. in a million years did I think I would ever see that. And Sergachev's sitting on nine goals, 50 assists, 144 blocks, and he's playing about 24 minutes a night as well. And now I'm just going to move into their bottom. Do you know what? Let's just talk about their forward group as a whole. Obviously, Kucherov, yeah. Stemkos, and Braden Point. Those, those are some good hockey players. We understand yeah. that. Brandon Hagel is not that good of a hockey player. Brandon Hagel is not better than, call it, William Nylander. Nick Paul is a significant downgrade on John Tavares at that 2C spot. Yeah. Ross Colton, whether you want to talk about Yarncroak, Kerfoot, or Bunting, or whoever, downgrade, if you're comparing them to the Leafs. The top line, I would even say, it's tough. But the top lines are at least comparable. The top like, lines are comparable. Yes. Yeah. I would say they, as a whole, we have the best player, Matthews, but we also have the second best player, who's Marner. The third best player is probably Kucherov. The, the next three. Yeah. It goes Matthews, Marner, those three, Bunting, is what I would call that line. Because I think game one, it's going to be Matthews, Marner, Bunting. Or yeah. I could also see it being Yarn Croak because Matthews loves Yarn Croak. And you just got to make that guy happy, and I think he did. Good things happen when he's happy. But but it doesn't it doesn't matter who you put on that. So now we've established player. that Leafs top six is better than Tampa's top six. Now let's go to the bottom six. So the bottom six is where me and you are going to have some issues because I 100 percent believe the Lightning's bottom six is better than uh, Toronto. This bottom six cannot compare to the Leafs bottom six. Like it's it's the Leafs bottom six is way better than this bottom six. I don't think so. So, let's... We can do this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm pulling up the, the Toronto one right now. Don't worry. Yeah. Aston Reese, Camp, Lafferty. You're right. Lafferty has been pitiful. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Lafferty's been pitiful. But want to know who's been worse? Tanner Janot has been worse. Has uh, he actually... Tanner Janot has one goal since joining the Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay, so, so the stats I'm looking at, I forgot that he got traded there because it's just his full season stats. 
which I mean yeah. still aren't great, but no, they're they're really bad. So here I'm just sorry, I'm getting my computer all set up here with there. with the side to side comparisons. And it's going like if really... if we're talking about like the the group that is showing on Daily Face Off, there's not a chance. Okay, no, we're not talking about whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So hear me out. Ashton Reese, goodbye. Sam Lafferty, goodbye. That third line is centered by Ryan O'Reilly. Yeah. With Noel Achari on the wing and one of Kerfoot, Camp, or Bunting on the other wing. So you, you've said you've said Bunting's going to be on the top line, so let's keep him there. No, I'm going to go Yarncroak on the top line. Okay. I'm going to go so Bunting, Bunting on this line, and I'm going to go Kerfoot playing with Tavares and, and uh, Nylander. So okay. now you have Achari, O'Reilly, Bunting, third line, and that leaves you with David Camp, who to me is one of the best shutdown centers in the NHL. The defensive zone starts that that guy wins is is just crazy to me. And then, so you can go Camp, Lafferty, and this is fourth line minutes now we're talking. Camp, yeah. Lafferty, and like you can go Zach Aston Reese. You can throw Nick Abergezi in there. If it's a rough series, Wayne Simmons goes in there. There's so many options. And I just, I, I, I don't know, man. I just, I look at a line uh surly between maroon and Kalorn, and i'm like that's just a playoff line like that line is just going to beat you down and still score on you and beat they're matched you down. up against ryan o'reilly nolachari and michael bunting yeah and they're gonna beat ryan the living o'reilly, shit out of them better than sorelli michael bunting way significantly better than patrick maroon like like heads and shoulders better than my patrick maroon like not even don't even talk to me Nolachari is a much more playoff built player than Alex Kalorn is. That the third line is not even a comparison, dude. Like, See, not like no, I, I think you're significantly like underestimating Tampa here. Nope. No, like, I'm looking at these rosters right here, and I'm telling you right now, the Toronto Maple Leafs are like in every asset facet except for goaltending are significantly better than Tampa Bay. I think that is a load of horse shit, Dave. I and you know, a part of me doesn't even think that you believe it. You're putting on the show because you have to. No, no I not, not just not just not just for the bitter rivals, but as a Leafs fan, you have to put on the show of it's our year. We're the best. I'm telling I think, you, right? I, I think there's a there's a part of you that's sitting there going, "We're not that much better than Tampa." If no, we are I at all. wholeheartedly believe that we are that much better than Tampa. I I really do believe that. That is not me talking for this show. That is not me talking as a Leafs fan. That is me. As a hockey guy, looking at these two lineups and thinking you would be absolutely crazy to think that this Tampa Bay lineup is better than this Toronto Maple Leafs lineup. Other than the goalie. I'll give you the goalie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, we have. There's a reason why we haven't had to discuss goaltending. Because no, we don't we, have to. <laughs> there is zero reason to discuss goaltending here. Andre Vasilevsky specifically in the playoffs after losing a game does not lose hockey games. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, it's, it's if you it's can't scary. beat them twice in a row, you're not going to beat them. Yeah. Anyway, I I just that I I think Tampa's tired too. It's been so long that they've been See, playing hockey. Like no, I I I think I think in the regular season, yeah, they're tiring out. I think once the playoffs hit, you have the Stanley Cup playoff badge on your fucking shirt and on the ice, like that. It's like that. You can't teach it. It's that that instinct of we're just here to fucking win. Sixteen wins and we were fucking done. I think that kicks in for them. They've been there. Like I think, I think it, they turn it up and not they run through the Maple Leafs, but they definitely win this series, hundred percent. That's crazy that you're actually picking them to win. Like that's 100%. look at this team. There's no like I'm sorry, but no. Like they're just not that good. They're not as good as they have been in the past. We we perform better than them in the re- this regular season. We've beaten them head to head. Like we are but the you better. Haven't, but you haven't beaten them in the playoffs this year, and that's all that matters. And well, I think Tampa, I think Tampa is get idiot. No, no. 
No, 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 I get that. But I, what I'm saying is that when the playoffs come around, Tampa's bringing their game. They're not just cranking it up one or two levels. They're bringing it up 10 levels. And I don't think anything can fucking stop them. Like, they're just that fucking good. Well, Colorado also, the last... stopped them last year. What are you talking about? Nothing. Yeah, and Colorado, stop. well, they were a fucking juggernaut last year. It was it was literally, that, like we talked about it, as like one of the first times that we can remember that the legitimate two best teams in the league played in the cup final. I don't know, man. And it, t- and it took a Colorado super team to do it. I don't think the Leafs have it in them. I just don't. Well, I can't wait to, to tell you you're wrong. I, I just, I can't wait for you to be wrong. Because I'm, I'm telling you, this Tampa team trusted. is not, this, this Tampa team is not going to be able to do what they did to the Leafs last year. The Leafs are better and they're worse. And it was that slim of a margin last year. That slim. Like this. And we're better and they're worse. And it really, for me, that's what it comes down to. We have better goaltending than we did last year. We're... I thought you were going to say them, them. I was going to be like, hey, if we just went over this. No, no. <laughs> we have better defense, like, one through six than we did last year. We have better forwards, one through 12, than we did last year. And I would say the exact opposite for them. And just how slim of a margin, like, an idiot referee calling Justin Hole for an interference penalty margin we're talking here is what we lost by to them last year. And that margin, that margin is going to be much wider in the Leafs' favor this year. And just based on the players on the team, man, based on the players on the team, that's just what it comes down to. You've brought playoff grit in here, but the right kind of playoff grit. Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari. You've brought in Luke Shen, a guy who is known as the human eraser. You're telling me that's not going to be a playoff. He won a Stanley Cup with Tampa Bay. Did he actually? Yes. I don't even remember that. You don't remember him playing for Tampa Bay or you don't remember him winning a Stanley Cup? I don't remember him playing for Tampa. Oh, he played for Tampa. I, now you're making me second guess myself, but he definitely played for Tampa. Come on. Because it was the the other Shen won one in St. Louis, right? Uh, yeah. Right yeah. He won two. Both in Tampa? 1920 and 2021. Son of a bitch. Yeah. I do not remember him playing for Tampa. Yeah, man. He went from the Leafs to Philly to the Kings for a year to Arizona for two years to Anaheim for a year to Vancouver for a year to Tampa for two back to Vancouver for two back to Toronto. Okay, he, so that's pro- that's probably where I got confused. I'm like, I knew he played in Vancouver. And I knew he left Vancouver to go to Toronto. So, yeah, just it's zoned out. Yeah. Anyway, I. Oh. Why does it do that? The NHL website's weird. I fully lied to you. He wasn't in Vancouver. So he went from Anaheim to Vancouver, probably at the deadline, because Vancouver thought they were good in 18. And then he signed with Tampa Bay, it looks like, in that offseason for two years. He was there, won two Stanley Cups. Okay, yeah. So we're look, yeah. So eighteen, nineteen, he played eighteen games for Vancouver. Yeah, left from Anaheim. Uh, then Top played nineteen, twenty, and twenty, twenty one in Tampa, and then signed back in Vancouver for twenty one, twenty two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and his he's played in the playoffs four times. Once for Philly, once for LA, and twice for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Both of Shut which. Up. He played like eight and eleven games. What the fuck? I like do not rem- like even like in the cup final. I don't remember him fucking him being there. Yeah, well, he was. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm not gonna argue that he wasn't. I just I don't remember it at all. Yeah, I I don't. Uh, that was kind of at the downturn of his career. I feel like. I feel like he's even gotten better since then. Oh, like, so I think probably the downturn of his year of his career was probably playing in fucking Arizona and Anaheim. Yeah. Looking looking at the numbers anyways. Yeah, that's actually fair. Anyway, that's enough about Luke Shen. I just yeah. moral of the story, I think he's a dog. And I think that that's the kind of guy that the Leafs are going to need in this playoff series. I think a guy like 
like TJ Brody is going to be immeasurably important this year. I think guys on the bottom pair, like Justin Holt, Timothy Lilgren, Tom, Connor Timmons, I think they're all going to have to play a role at some point in this series. I don't think it's going to be the same six guys every night. I don't even think it'll be six guys every night if if Keith has anything to say about it. He'll go 11 and 7 and not care, not give a fuck. He doesn't yeah. care. So, I don't know. It, it, I, like I said, we've gone on about this for about 15 minutes now, but the Leafs are beating Tampa this year. It's happening. They're going to the second round, and they're going to lose to Boston. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think, yeah. Well, no, they're not getting out of the first round, but I think everyone's losing to Boston. I think that a Tampa-Boston second round series is going to be fucking nuts. Oh, it's not going to happen. Anyway, uh, I think that's all that we have for this week, unless you have something else to get off your chest, Mr. Gallo. Um, there's nothing else I can think of. It was a pretty quiet week around the league. So, yeah, uh, what do the Leafs have this week? So, coming up this week, the Leafs are, I forget if they're in, nope, they host the Columbus Blue Jackets tomorrow, 7 p.m., followed by a big matchup against the Boston Bruins in Boston on Thursday. Uh, Habs leave Saturday night, I think. Oh, what am I doing this Saturday night? I feel like I, I have something. Nothing. I, yeah, well, I don't know. I feel like I had something, but... Oh, it's Easter. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, uh, Easter Sunday? Still putting out an episode, probably? Uh, we'll see. We'll see, because that's going to be a busy day for Avery. Okay, so it might be another Monday one next week, then? Let's just, let's just get it out here right now that it might be a Monday. Potentially a Monday one next week as well. Obviously, we will keep you, the listeners, uh, informed on Twitter and Instagram. Oh, yeah, because uh, I also have an assignment due that day. No, we're Monday. Monday. Monday for sure? Yeah. Monday. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so just the Saturday night game against the Habs in Toronto. Yeah. So we've got uh, the Red Wings visiting Montreal tomorrow night, the Capitals visiting on Thursday night, and then in Toronto on Saturday for the big one. Also, like only two games. Like we have five games left. We have two games left after that. And that's like heartbreaking. Yeah, I, I yeah, we will only have three. See, I'm interested to kind of see what the Leafs are going to do because I just want to touch on the schedule for this week. They did yeah. not like Marner did not play last night. They had multiple. They had Giordano sitting out, I believe. I forget who else, but they had a couple guys sitting. Um, McCabe, McCabe sat. Did he? I'm like pretty sure I saw that. Maybe. Anyway, regardless, load management type stuff, NBA type stuff. Um, I want to see how they're going to play that game against Boston on Thursday. I don't care what they what they do against Columbus. Columbus is a dumpster fire, but oh my! Wait, wait, oh, you play? You guys played? Oh, you're gonna fucking smoke them. They're, they're so bad. bad. <laughs> they're so put up an eight. Bad. We we put up an eight spot on them. <laughs> yeah, like, like that's how bad they are. Yeah, like below the CHL and Johnny Goudreau, but. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to see what they're going to do against Boston lineup wise and against Tampa, right? Like, do they do they show their cards and that they, they play to uh, Tampa the following week on the Tuesday? It'll be their second last game. What do they do there? Do they do they keep their cards here? Do they sit everybody play the NHL team? It entirely depends if you've clinched home ice home ice or not. Yeah, if you've clinched home ice, fuck it, you can play the AHL team. If you haven't. I think you have to go for it. Yeah, you got to go all all hands on deck, that's for sure. I think we will have clinched by that point, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, off the top of my head, I don't know the math for it, but, like, yeah, no. I'm going to take a quick look. Like, they're only, they're four points behind. Or yeah, four points behind, but they have a game in hand, so it's really only two points. So, like, that's close. That's tight. Anyway. I think that's all we have to talk about this week. Uh, thank I you for listening so. to us. Thank you to the Game Entertainment and Media for hosting us. And we are out of here. We will catch you uh, next Monday, we've established. Maybe 7 p.m., probably not, because Catano works until 6. So it'll be another late monday dish. Unless, do you get Easter Monday? No, you don't get any time off. I know no. that. Why did I ask? I got Friday. I got Friday. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for listening. Have a good one. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week.